let's talk about higher doses of vitamin D3. Uh, so what we call uh, higher doses, uh, that's usually uh, 5,000 to 10,000 international units a day. I know whenever we've mentioned those doses before, under the video, we uh, guarantee there are some comments that's oh, way too much. You're going to have calcifications and so on. So that's why I asked you to clarify all this. Well, here's my take on vitamin D. It's probably one of the most or least understood uh, vitamins of all. And I'll tell you why. Back in the old days, believe it or not, um, doctors used to prescribe high dose vitamin D um, for patients routinely. And I'm talking, there was a drug called in calcidiol or calcitriol. This, there's three drugs that were pushed back in the day in the 30s and 40s. And they found out it was such a beneficial modality that the hospitals were actually losing patients. People were staying out of the hospital. Well, then people think that the reason that the government could put the kibosh on it is because they wanted through pressures of the AMA, wanted people to enter the hospital. You don't want people leaving hospitals. So it's got a bad rap. And I think one of the most confusing things too about it is the, the, the units. Um, they make those units sound so high. I mean, you have to understand that the international unit, it was the conversion. Um, if you do 40,000 IUs, 40,000 IUs, that's one milligram. One milligram. So, I, I, like they say, the cancer dose of at least 20 milligrams a night, um, that would be what? 0 0.25? 0 0.25 milligrams? 250 micrograms? I mean, when you talk in, in micrograms, it doesn't sound so ominous, you know, 5,000 to 10,000 units, but it's not a lot of milligrams if you convert it. And also, when I was at a recent AMMG, the you know, Age Management Medical Group, yeah. when I went to their conference, Dr. Derek De Silva, who's big on uh, nutritional supplements, vitamins, and minerals, he gave a talk and he said that when you go back and look at the research of vitamin D, that they grotesquely underestimated and underpublished what the actual RDA should be. And he's gone through the research and came up. And said, listen, that uh, one or 2,000 uh, IUs a day is way too low. He feels that the RDA should be seven to 8,000 IUs per day. Now, if that's your, the accurate IUs per day, RDA, um, then it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to realize that 10,000 IUs or five to 10,000 is not a big deal. You can go outside in high noon in a bathing suit for 20 minutes and get 10, at least 10,000 IUs or the equivalent of it as it, the body processes the sunlight and converts it to vitamin D. So if you think about it, being out in sun, sunshine for a, quite, a, uh, quite a while, it, it's not a dangerous unit to get 20,000 IUs. It's so easy to get. Um, but there's a there's another fellow called... Um, Oh, me too, for this book, for your audience. This is the best book you can find on vitamin D. It says, Know Your D, okay? This is chock full of good information. I recommend every physician get this so they can get the straight skinny on vitamin D, all right? Yeah. Now, there's another fella out there. His name is Jeff Bowles, and he's written the vitamin D3 miracle, the miraculous results of extremely high doses of the sunshine hormone, vitamin D3. And he's experimented with high, he'll take 25,000, 50,000, he's taken 1,000, 100,000 IUs a day for years and says he's had no sequela. He lists numerous studies where doctors have prescribed 50,000, 100,000. As a matter of fact, there was a doctor that gave a patient 300,000 IUs over a period of a month, no complications. There was another doctor that gave a patient a million, a million IUs, one dose, of course, and there was no sequelae. He feels that the major complication, the bad rap that vitamin D gets is with this calcification uh, 
issue is only because people are deficient in magnesium and vitamin K2. Matter of fact, in this book here, he mentions the miraculous cure and prevention of all diseases, what doctors had never learned. He says that most diseases, chronic diseases, are due to a vitamin D, magnesium, K2, zinc, boron. He said boron, boron, zinc, K2, vitamin D. He said those things, if in proper proportion, will lessen any negative consequences. In other words, uh, uh, calcium going to soft tissues. So with those, uh, the, and of course, the biggest three there is the vitamin D and the uh, magnesium and the K2. But just those three, uh, you will, should never have an, an, an issue with hypervitaminosis uh, D and uh, presenting as, as, as calcification. Mm -hmm. So you want to get your magnesium optimized, your vitamin K2 optimized, and then you can ramp up the vitamin D for as much as you want to. According to him, he's taken 100,000 IUs for years without complication. Now, that's one of one, but he lists many studies uh, where uh, people are giving you know, 50 to 100,000 IUs routinely. And so it, it, the bad rap is there are people, they're not, it's not, it's not the vitamin D, it's the lack of uh, magnesium and K2. Now, K2... We've had talks about K2, I believe. There's a book by, uh, oh, heck, I can't shoot it. Famous Canadian researcher, Kathy Rilme Blau, uh, naturopath. But she mentions vitamin K2 and the calcium paradox. She mentions the same thing that, you know, it's the K2 that will guide the calcium to the teeth and bones and keep it from the soft tissues and the arteries and vessels and so forth. She mentioned that. So it's K2. Now, there's two forms of K2. We know MK4 and MK7. MK4, and this is confusing. So let's get this straight. MK4 is measured RDA with milligrams, and the daily milligram strength should be 45. MK7 is much more efficient, much more potent. And you only need 120 micrograms of it. Okay. So MK4 is the plant based source. MK7 is the animal based source. One, you need a minimum of 45 milligrams per day, and that's MK4. The other, you need at least 120 micrograms of MK2. But let me throw my own caveat in there. I feel you need um, 120 micrograms of. MK7 with every 10,000 IUs of vitamin D. So if you're going to go to vitamin D, 20,000 IUs, then I would bump that 120 to 240. Okay. And what exact levels of vitamin D are you shooting for in the blood? You know, the range was 30, minimum of 30, under 30 uh, nanograms per ml. That was considered insufficient. Dr. Rothenberg, I mentioned him earlier, he thinks that uh, 60 to 80 is ideal. Um, I feel that 60 to 80 is ideal because that puts 70 right in the middle. And the reason I like 70 in the middle as optimum is that uh, another OBGYN taught me years ago that, in, that the thyroid won't be optimized unless you're vitamin D is at least 70. So I shoot for 60 to 70. I've had patients come in, you know, 100, 120, 130. Um, Rothenberg, Dr. Rothenberg states that he's never seen a case of hypervitaminosis D leading to negative complications until the serum level gets above 150. Okay. No one's ever seen any, any complications under 150, but I err on the side of caution. And I think, well, if the thyroid is optimized at around 70, I think 60 to, to 80 is a, is a good number to, to shoot for. But I don't freak out if I get numbers over 100 or you know, 120 or 130. 
Okay. I just tell the patient, make sure you're taking your magnesium and your K2, at least that, all right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this will be reassuring for a lot of people, I guess, because um, a lot of GPs are always telling patients take 500,000 units a day maximum. I, I tell my patients, because I also read a lot of blood work with insufficient vitamin D levels, I always tell them, take 5,000, yeah. And sometimes if they tell their GP what they are taking, the GP is, is saying, oh, so much. Uh, again, they're afraid of, you know, uh, hyper calcifications if it goes above a certain level. But it's never been shown to be an, an issue if you, if you keep it under 150 serum level. And like, again, um, Jeffrey Bowles has written two books on it where he has quoted many studies. And Jeff Bowles has been researching this for years, years, decades. And he's written books on it. Now, he may, he may be a little off to the right side a little bit, a little heavy side, um, but he's never seen complications uh, in, uh, you know, 50,000 to 100,000 IUs a day. Uh, me personally, uh, again, now, talk about supplementation. The supplementation isn't as important as the serum levels because we all, we all metabolize D differently. So me personally, I will monitor the, the, the serum levels to find out where that person needs, needs to be. But I've had a lot of patients who are obese or after, you know, darker skin, and I got to hit them with a lot of vitamin D to get uh, the number is therapeutic. I think a lot of it's sequestered in their, in their fat content, to be honest with you. Um, but again, D is one that you have to look at the labs to get it dialed in versus just saying, I'm going to take 10,000 IUs the rest of my life and be satisfied with it. Um, I wouldn't worry about having complications with it. Um, but again, everybody's different. I can't make a blanket statement about every, every just take 10,000 IUs a day. Get your baseline and realize that, okay, let me take whatever, five to 8,000, I mean, five to 10,000 a day. Uh, I'll start them at five to 10,000 a day, depending on where they are. And I'll bring it back in a few months or actually about three months. And I'll look at it. Mm -hmm. And if it's, again, if it's above 150, I'll say, you know what? I think the, I think we need to back off a little bit. Yeah. But if it's 60 to 80, and in my experience, in my experience, my clinical experience, I've had to put most of my patients on 10,000 IUs a day to achieve that 60 to 80 serum level. Okay. Okay, thank you for sharing your uh, knowledge and experience. Thank you so much.